With my side complete, now it's time to start working on the slat. I'll begin this process by creating another new component, giving it a name, and you'll see that it too is active. When a new component is created, or a component is made active, the other components will fade out. To completely remove this from visibility, I just need to select the light bulb icon. Now I can begin my new sketch, and I'll do so by creating a rectangle. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to center the rectangle on the origin point of my selected sketching plane. That way I can pick and drag my values. I'll set the height to 3.5, and the width, I'll begin to type seat width from my named parameters. I'll select that and click Enter to keep it. Now I have my sketch basically started for the main part of my body. I'll go ahead and extrude that out using the press pull tool. And of course, we'll use material for the thickness. All right, now I'll begin creating a new sketch by starting a regular two point rectangle tool. And I'll select the top face of my first element. I'll just rough in a size quickly here and rough in another shape. Now I'd like to use a technique that I prefer to keep things in line. I'll create another line from the midpoint of my second rectangle to the first one. This will keep them aligned as long as there's a horizontal or vertical constraint, which there is. I'll change this geometry. I'll select this line and change it to construction geometry so that it will be ignored by three-dimensional tools. Now I'll project some geometry, the end of my slat. I'll then add some points to my sketch in order to constrain. I'll add a point to the middle on both the line that was projected and the rectangle that was drawn and use a coincident constraint to connect those points. I can now place some dimensions. For example, I remember that the slot that I cut in the side was just over two inches, so I'll hold this to two inches. Since this is bound in the middle, rather than dimensioning this overall width, I could apply a dimension between the sides so that I wanna make sure that I end up with, oh, say three tenths of an inch of material. Or, Let's thicken this up and make it 5 tenths or a half inch. Now I can still apply a dimension. I'll hit the D key in order to restart the dimension tool and I'll apply a dimension here. Fusion will warn me that this will over constrain the sketch. However, I still want to see that dimension in the sketch so it will generate a driven dimension. I'll restart the dimension tool and set this to be just over 1 half inch and I'll define how far it is from the end because we wanna make sure that we have some material left over. So I'll say I want that to be say oh, 0.6 inches. To set the overall distance that this tab protrudes out into the board, I need to think about how I wanna dimension that. What I'd like to do is to make sure that these two values or are slightly less than the thickness of the material. So I'll start out with my material parameter and then subtract, I'll set that value, and now my sketch is fully constrained. This will leave about a half inch of material sticking out beyond the face of the side of my model. I'll finish my sketch, use my press pull tool, set the value to minus material, so it's going back the other way and click OK. Now what I'd like to do is mirror that feature rather than resketching it. I'll go to the Create pulldown, go to the Mirror tool, tell it that I'd like to pattern features, and select this last extrusion. I'll set my mirror plane here and tell it to go ahead and generate the model. Now once again, I can use the press pull tool to select the edges that I want and 
rather than even making it completely round, let's just go ahead and add a 0.3 radius to that. All right, so now I have my second component finished. Let's save our model, add a comment so that others can see this version of the assembly, what was special about it, and why did I deliberately save it. Now we're ready to move on to the third and final part.